Verum Audio contacted me and let me know they were shipping me a pair of Verum One headphones for an honest review. And while I'm waiting for products to arrive, I'd like to check out what other reviewers have said about them. So while waiting for the Verum Ones to arrive, I came across Joshua Valor, who has a few more subscribers, a smidgen more, I'd say, than I do. And he said, don't buy them. This intrigued me. Let's watch. Out of all the headphones that I've had shipped here, I've never had a headphone arrive broken or damaged or not working. Now let's replay the beginning of his video. Is that this uh, wood version uh, got shipped to me by a, a viewer of the show named Jacob. Thank you very much, Jacob. I do appreciate you sending it in. Um, it worked pretty fine up until literally today. It worked pretty fine until literally today. Okay, so they didn't arrive broken or damaged or not working, but he's implying they did. So I'm not sure if he's a genius or just not making sense. Now he picks up a different pair dropped off to him by another person that also has a channel in balance. And he says this. So with one headphone, I'm kind of willing to chalk that up to bad luck and just say, look, like every product line is gonna have its bad apples. But two of them, you know, I may be really, really unlucky, but uh, you know, at that point you kind of got to talk about it. But the person dropped them off knowing they weren't working properly. So that's not the same as randomly getting two pairs that didn't work. Yet he implies he did and never ever explains why a person dropped off a pair of broken headphones. Quick sidebar, the Scientific Audiophile is not a repair shop. Do not drop off broken shit. Take it to Joshua Valor instead. Now I'm not a detective, but I'm pretty good at detecting bullshit and right now this story doesn't make much sense. But it gets even more odd. The owner of that known broken pair doesn't want to spend $30 to ship them back to the Ukraine to have them looked at. Remember that $30 because you might have a legitimate beef if you weren't using Joshua Valor to be a representative. Joshua goes on about this being a massive, massive issue. If a big company came out with a product with massive issues like this. Massive in Joshua's world is getting a used pair of headphones, and I'm assuming spending a few weeks listening to them, and then having a problem with them. And not contacting the company, but talking to the guy who sent them to you. Then another person, who purposely sent him a broken pair, for some unknown reason, and then takes the word of the person who sent him the first pair, that there's yet another person out there with a channel imbalance issue, with no verification. I think it's safe to assume Joshua is not a trained journalist. He got two used products from two people, neither of which were drop shipped to him new, were previously opened, and theoretically could have been abused, but he now declares there's a massive issue, and he can't recommend them because he would feel terrible if someone got a bad pair and had to pay $30 to have them shipped back for repair. And this is why this $30 is so fascinating to me. It's because Josh is now strongly recommending the Abyss Diana MRs. Because Joshua thinks $30 is outrageous to ask someone because they should have arrived in working order. And I agree that they should have arrived in working order. And the $30 should be refunded if the cause isn't user error, like not inserting the connections fully. But my issue is with Joshua, who has no sense of his own hypocrisy because he is now recommending to his viewers the Abyss Diana MR, a $3,000 base price headphone. Not only is he recommending a pair of headphones that cost eight and a half times the cost of the Verum ones, but the company has a terrible warranty and a massive proven quality control issue. So what is the Abyss warranty? Let's read it. The warranty covers only the cost to repair the headphone or included accessory. The warranty does not cover shipping. Do you hear that, Josh? It does not cover shipping. Though you complain about the $30 shipping Verum wanted. But Abyss doesn't stop there. They put an actual illegal 
final sentence into their warranty. I mean, it might be legal in some third world country, but in the USA, Europe, and most of Asia, you can't say what they do at the very bottom of the warranty. Warranty rules are subject to change without notice. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Customer. Your warranty is now only 30 days after purchase. It was a year when you bought them, but we changed the warranty the day after you bought it. This is not a good company. But Josh is recommending the Abyss 2 MRs. But what if you simply don't like the sound? Or they don't fit you well and you want to return it? This awesome company, Abyss, states on their website, Once the original package is opened, they are considered used. Just like the two products that Joshua has in his hands from Averum. Opened returns may be authorized within 14 days of purchase date minus a 20 percent restocking fee minus shipping charges both ways sweet you pay shipping charges both ways and a six hundred dollar restocking fee for the abyss diana mrs probably thirty dollars for shipping is the cost so josh is complaining about thirty dollars on one hand and now supports a company selling a three thousand dollar headphone and up they cost more, some of their other models, that not only charges shipping under warranty, but might even void the warranty illegally without notice. Then when he stated massive issues based solely on two headphones and anecdotal evidence of a third, he doesn't mention that Abyss has a really known massive issue. I'll put all the links into the description. People are literally opening up their Abysses to find bad diaphragms. See the picture here. And there's more information. This article was updated just three months ago entitled The Abyss Headphones Controversy. Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy, crinkly ride. It's because their diaphragms are coming crinkled, which distorts the sound. Once again, I'll put all these links into the description so you can peruse them on your own time. So with Joshua's very odd, never buy a Verum 1 video in my head, I began to review a few days later when the Verum 1 arrived. Overall look and feel of the Verum 1s is very, very good. They feel sturdy and very well made. The leather band is nice and comfortable. To change the headphone fit, you simply remove these two screws on both sides and you can adjust the band and then you screw them back in. Pretty simple. I've heard a few people say that it could be easier to change, but I have to say, as an adult, your head size does not, I repeat, does not change. So spend the 30 seconds to a minute, get the right fit, and you're done forever. Wait, what? Ah. My editor is saying something. Bonds. Oh yeah, Barry Bonds. Okay, I almost never make a mistake when doing a video, and we normally edit those things out anyway. But yes, if you are a massive steroid user like Barry Bonds, your head may continue to grow. So let's just put a caveat next to the headphone adjustment mechanism. That massive stereo... Massive steroid users may find using the screws a little annoying as their head size continues to grow. Comfort. You can't have an uncomfortable headphone. Unlike any other audio product, if the headphone isn't comfortable, it doesn't really matter how good it sounds because you're not going to wear it. The Verum ones are really comfortable with these super nice pads. And they're easily replaceable because huh, they're magnetic. The two and a half millimeter connectors, this brings me back to Josh, who said, There's although the choice of a 2.5 over a 3.5, you know, I feel like 3.5 is a little bit more sturdy and isn't gonna get, uh, you know, yanked out and broke. Okay, this guy, Josh, literally listened to headphones for a living, and I've yet to come across a single study, Reddit forum, or even anecdotal evidence that two and a half millimeter connections break more often than three and a half millimeters, ever. And I'm going back all the way to the times of Julius Caesar, 
So while I'm not entirely sure when the 2.5mm connection was invented, just maybe, maybe I'm missing some ancient Greek or Egyptian issues with it. So if I'm wrong, please cite the description in the comments. And I mean cite them. None of this Claudine Gay shit that will get you expelled from the scientific audiophile community. Looks. The look overall is very cool. Although I'm aware of a matter of personal taste. The wood grain. It's not real, but it will fool all but the most discerning people. And the V is quite cool looking. If you're looking for a product that is clearly about craftsmanship, that is made by hand, not an assembly line, like a, more like a Porsche than a Chevy, then you'll like the way this headphone is put together. The Verum ones are flat in the bass region. And unless you only listen to smooth, soft jazz, you're going to notice the lack of deep bass. Bish's organ didn't have the power I'm used to from my reference headphones, so I EQ'd them. Once EQ'd, the sound was fantastic. And I mean reference quality great. And even better was how loud they could play without distortion. Basically as loud as you need them to go. Bass was abundant, again, after EQ. The mid-range and highs were extremely smooth and fundamentally accurate. I've said this about speakers and headphones in the past. I don't care much about sound out of the box as long as they can play very loud without distortion. I can then EQ them properly. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you I did have one issue with these. And because I listened to products for 600 hours with the queen of the king of instruments, the very fine Diane Bish, it would be wrong of me to not play with the product a lot during the time. I noticed if I turned the two and a half millimeter adapter on the left, just turned it around like this, nothing ha changed as it should be. If I turn the two and a half millimeter adapter on the right, I could get it to drop out that channel imbalance pretty significantly. The adapter was fully inserted and it, all it took was to continue to turn it just a little bit more and it came back full, perfectly balanced in both. This only happened if I went out of my way to turn the adapter, simply thrashing my head around as I head bashed for a few hours to Bish's rendition of Alfred Holland's trumpet minuet. There was never any issue. So my recommendation is not to play with the adapters while you're listening to them. Now let me go on a tangent for 10 seconds. Bish has a lot of chutzpah to basically diss trumpet players to play a song called The Trumpet Minuet on the organ. But that's my girl. Balls of steel on that one. Now I always listen for sibilance, and there's no better song to do that than Rebecca Pigeon's masterfully mastered Spanish Harlem by Chesky Records. A few of you might wonder why I exclusively listen to 600 hours of the same tracks while testing. But reviewers must do this. It really bothers me to hear other YouTube reviewers that always use different artists and songs. How the f*** can you compare two, three, or a dozen different products if you aren't comparing the same things? And worse yet, some of those reviewers don't have reference systems, so they aren't even listening to the same system either. Back to Spanish Harlem. Listening to this track at all volumes about a dozen times. The Verum ones handled the track with a plum. Just imagine if I changed DAC amps and then started this review of a new headphone at the same time, but the DAC has some kind of filter issue. I'd be telling you the headphones suck, like Andrew Robinson almost did testing speakers with a new amp because he doesn't have a reference amp. Oh, the 9000A proved to be the unsuck it amp, single-handedly saving the Mission 700s from what could have been a negative review. So no sibilance, fantastic. Now my reference system headphone, DAC amp, is the RME ADI 2FS. It's completely transparent, and my reference headphones are the phenomenal Dan Clark Aeon Open Xs. These cost $449, $100 more than the Verum ones. Comfort level between the two, let's compare reference to the Verums, is a non-factor. The Dan Clarks are a little lighter. After two hours of listening, I didn't care which one I had on. Maybe if I were doing a 24-hour marathon, 
I'd prefer the open axes because they're just a bit lighter, but it's so close, you shouldn't use comfort making a purchase decision. Once EQ'd, both of these headphones can play so loud with so little distortion that it's not a lick worth of difference between the two. Where the open X's have the advantage over the Verum 1's is they sound much better out of the box. They need less adjustment. So if you have a system without the ability to EQ, I would recommend the open X's. Now the Verum 1's have the magnetic ear pads, the Dan Clark's don't. So if you're the kind of person who goes through a lot of pads or simply likes to play around with different ear pads, then the Verum 1's are your go-to headphones. The Verum 1's will not be replacing the open X's in my reference system, mostly because so many headphone amps I test don't have EQ. But the Verum 1's are good enough to be reference headphones in any system with EQ capability. Now for the all-important rating. You may have guessed it, a reference headphone deserves a reference rating and a Ukrainian beef borscht served with a Pinot Noir, but not any Pinot Noir, a fantastic $100 bottle of Lyric Pinot Noir. And that is our rating for the Verum Ones. My final thoughts on the Verum Ones is an overall excellent headphone. Easy to drive, but it is low ohm. So your amp may have an issue, which happened to me while driving not just these, but also the Dan Clarks when I was testing the Fio K9. That review is coming in the next week or two, so stay tuned, subscribe, and enable notifications if you haven't done so. You can spend $3,000 on a pair of headphones, but that doesn't mean you're getting a great headphone. I've heard the Abyss Diana V2s, not the MRs that Joshua is recommending. But the Verum 1s and the Dan Clark's Open X destroy the Diana V2s at about one-eighth the price. If I only was given two choices, either pay money for the Verum 1s, $350, or get a free pair of Diana V2s from uh, Abyss, I'd gladly let my dad buy the Verum 1s, even if that means another month without his meds. So those are my final words on the Verum 1s. And if you want to piss off Vladimir Putin, go out and buy a pair. You'll get a great pair of headphones while helping the Ukrainian economy. That's all for the Scientific Audiophile. Have a great day.